Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Volvo XC90. Now, over the past few months, I have gone through thick and thin with this car. I think we all have. If you've been watching the series, you'll know that, well, first I bought it from Copart for 800 quid, sight unseen as it always is the case with these sorts of cars. And when it arrived, it wasn't quite what I expected. I mean, what was I meant to expect for 800 pounds on a car that was originally 60 or 70 grand back in the day? This was and is the 2004 executive model of the XC90, which was the flagship back then. But it wasn't exactly in the best condition, let's put it that way, and only had about two weeks MOT left on it once it did get delivered to me. And so the process has been in the past few months trying to get this thing through an MOT so that I could once drive it again. There's something really special about saving old cars, even if they might not be worth saving or even if they're mass produced like this XC90. But I just fell in love with this thing, the way it looks, the colour and the piping on the seats and all of the funny options that it had being an executive model back in 2004. And also in this day and age with things being mostly electric now, cars just don't have the same character that they once had like with this. And so I'm very pleased to say we have finally got an MOT on the Volvo and despite the title of this video implying it had anything to do with me, it actually didn't. It's been down at the Swedish car clinic which is a Volvo specialist and Saab specialist for the past month and they have finally managed to get this thing through its MOT. Although it's not quite as simple as that but it's got an MOT. <laughs> So to be honest, despite this thing taking a little bit longer than I would have liked to be seen to by the guys over at Swedish Car Clinic, it's been quite welcome in a way, not having this thing sat there looking sad on my driveway. I will say though, that whole time I've been wanting it back quickly so that I can film content with it because this thing's really expensive to insure. It costs me just over, wait for it, 2,000 pounds a year to insure this car. Now I'm sure I could probably get on the phone with them and have an argument about why I think that's too much, but I did just have my renewal and that was the best price they could give me. I've been driving for I think 10 years now actually, it will be 10 years next year. Not ever had to make a claim, nothing like that. And it's a 800 quid XC90, I can't believe it costs that much to insure, but needless to say, I wanna get my money's worth out of this thing and actually use it. So although it's been nice not to sort of having to look at it and wonder what to do with it, from day to day, I'm glad it's back. And it is driving, it, it's driving, it's got an MOT. This is, I guess, what we've all been waiting for, isn't it? It would have been nice to do that series where I was tinkering with all the spanners and all of this sort of stuff and then drive it out in a cloud of smoke with a fresh MOT on it and a brand new car, but that was never going to be realistic. But I'm quite pleased to say that the work that I did do to the car, well, has saved me quite a lot of money because the bill that I've just paid this morning would have been substantially larger had I not undertaken that work. Having said that, it was still a really big bill and the car is ultimately, for all intents and purposes, pretty much as I left it. So look, we've all been waiting a long time. It's been months and months and months since I've driven this thing. In fact, there's probably only one video on the channel where I do actually drive this thing, where everything else has been underneath the car or on a driveway somewhere. So let's jump in, uh, go for a drive. I'm gonna to talk to you about what they've done and uh, at the end of the video then we'll, we'll look at the bill I've just had and talk about where to go from here. <laughs> hey! I'm genuinely surprised that this is happening. I'm driving this car with a year's MOT. I, I didn't think that would be possible. I know I've said it, but it really is quite remarkable. It does just show that, you know, cars like this that have got 308,000 miles on them, 20 years old, don't necessarily need to just be completely written off. They have got some life in them, but we'll get onto that a little bit more in a second. I do just want to apologize that the car is very filthy. Uh, embarrassingly, just before I started filming this, I tried another location, it's actually where I normally film, and it was very muddy and I nearly, very nearly got stuck. Which brings me on to one thing with this car, which is that the four wheel drive system isn't working. It is front wheel drive at the moment, as I just found out very evidently when I got stuck in the mud a second ago. There is something that Volvo initially reported on when I took it there a few months back, 
and obviously is still something that is a problem. And on that in general, the handling and stuff of the car, you know what, you know, when you first jump back in, these seats are amazing. They're so, so comfortable. As you know, I drive quite a lot of the newer, expensive press car stuff. And you know what? Yes, they're very, very comfortable, but this is not far off, if not even better, because it's just got that sort of old, soft leather feel. It's so much more supple. And yeah, you just sink right into these seats. And before with the XC90, I complained about the driving position being strange. And it is strange in the sense that it makes you feel you're kind of angled down, which is very different to how you feel driving a Range Rover or a KN or even an X5. However, I will just say as well, now I've driven it a little bit more, I don't even notice. I'm just so excited by how comfortable the seats are. I'm not really bothered by that. But the view out of the car is fantastic. This all this glass around you, and it's very, very quiet in here, apart from the slightly rough engine, which we'll get to in a minute. But that's also, I think, down to the fact this is an executive and it has double glazing. So as a whole, the X United drives wonderfully, and this one is not doing ever so badly. However, there are a few things. So obviously it's only running in two-wheel drive, which is not ideal, especially as I'm on the hunt for something more suitable for the winter. And yes, of course you can get by the winter in the United Kingdom with a two-wheel drive car, no problem at all. However, if I had the option, I would like something with four-wheel drive. The alignment is off or the tracking is off. This has always been a problem with this car, even having the new wheels on the front doesn't seem to have helped that. And yeah, it's sort of, I guess I'm turning at about a 15 degree angle just to keep the wheel straight, which you get used to it, but it's not ideal and not something I'd really want to have if I was planning on taking this on a longer journey. The engine is misfiring slightly. It sort of has a very thumpy, low frequency idle to it. It sounds quite rough. I mean, these older D5s are quite lumpy and, and noisy, but it is more than it should be. And the chap at Swedish Car Clinic said, he doesn't just think it's an injector. He thinks it's probably something to do with the, I can't remember what he said actually, something a little bit more complicated than that. Not ruinous, but something slightly more involved than just replacing an injector. And what we opted to do, to be honest, what they sort of opted to do is just get it through the MOT, which is what we have done. And at this point, it had been four weeks. And I didn't really want to then say to them, hey, can you do this and can you do that? And what else is there? Well, yeah, of course, all of the stuff on the fiber optic system is still not working. So my radio, my sat nav, the dim, which is the display I have here, which would ordinarily show me range and fuel economy and things like that. None of this has ever worked since I've had this car and they didn't also get a chance to look at that. But ultimately that could be quite a long line of replacing everything along the system to see if we can fix it. And then there might actually be an issue with the wiring itself. So that's a bit of a shame. But you know what? I've been driving along today, at least on the way to the filming location with the music coming out of my phone. And you know what? I almost forgot that I didn't have a radio or I didn't have speakers that worked or a sat nav. So you might be thinking with all of that then, what have they actually fixed? Why have they had the car for a month? Uh, they haven't fixed all that much. And to be honest, the reason for that is because what it needed to get through the MOT was only a few very, well, not minor things, but a few small things. And I think that's largely in thanks to the work that I did on this car in that garage. Although I didn't get everything done that I wanted to there, it honestly reduced that MOT advisories list when they first retested it by like three quarters, which was very, very satisfying to see. So the best thing to do as I'm now driving is probably pull over, we'll go through what they've done and then, yeah, what we're gonna do next for this thing because it's still a little bit up in the air. Let's just give it a little bit of an Italian tune up before we do that though. probably do with it because I don't think this thing's been booted in a long long time okay so I'm home now and let's just recap very quickly so remember a few weeks back I took the car to a garage that I rented and attempted to replace everything myself so that we could get the car through the MOT now I spent I think it was just under 800 pounds on all the parts for those videos 
I ended up sending back, I think, the intercooler and maybe a couple of other things and got maybe a few hundred pounds back. Um, so let's say I've spent about 600 quid on all of those bits. Now, when we started that series, the state of the MOT that the car failed on, uh, there was a long, long list of failure items and advisories. Let me just recap you on those. So we had the tread depths on the front tires, obviously fails. Both headlight lenses, both seriously defective. ABS system warning lamp, near slide uh, wing mirror, seriously damaged. Near side front lower suspension arm, brake performance unable to be tested, and exhaust emissions exceed manufacturer's specified limit. Also, there was the near side registration plate lamp, front registration plate deteriorated, rear registration plate deteriorated, near side rear, offside front anti roll bar, linkage bulge. There was a long, long list of things. Then we did that series in the garage where I tinkered around. I did the control arm, that took me like two days. Looked at the fuel injectors did the number plates, did the wing mirror, changed the wheels, did a fair bit in the end. And then the list in comparison, when they retested it at Swedish Car Clinic, was this long. So you see, this is the entire list from Swedish Car Clinic. And this is the entire list from before I did any of the work, an entire page on an iPhone. So to be honest, when I went on and checked if they'd retested the car and found that it had failed but only on this number of items i was genuinely like really proud of myself very happy and the things that it failed on was even better so we didn't have any failures anymore on emissions or wing mirror or headlamps the only things that it had failed on were the registration plate lamp which obviously that's such a minor thing we had the abs light still on because remember in that series i had intended to do the abs rings myself but it was just way too difficult and I just couldn't seem to do it at all. Ran out of time and, and couldn't do that. So we had the ABS uh, light, so that was a fault. Near side front tire not fitted in accordance with side order instructions, same on the offside front. So obviously whoever had fitted these tires to so these wheels, whichever garage did it, they put the sidewalls on the wrong way. So some of these have inner and outer markings on them they have to go that way around otherwise it's an MOT failure so I'd never noticed that my initial thought was that I'd put the wheels on wrong but that's not the case obviously the tires were put on wrong to the wheels that I'd ordered so no problem really because it's just a case of switching them around parking brake efficiency below requirements so obviously now that they were able to test the parking brake it wasn't sufficient and so that failed the MOT on that the only other things that came up as advisories were a couple of brake hoses and a rear tire which was worn and quite close to the limit so all in all if you remove the registration plate lamp which is very insignificant and you remove the tires being fitted the wrong way around we were literally just left with an abs light and the parking brake efficiency below requirements and that was the one i was most worried about because i thought that's to do with the the rear brakes and if it's not effective at all which it wasn't to be honest it probably means reconstructing them to a certain extent and i was right about that so after they looked at some quotes for some parts and things like that they said it was probably going to be the abs rings which has kind of made me happy because that's what i thought it would be they gave me a quote for about 1500 quid to get it through the mot and i said to my wife before i dropped the car off i said if it's over a grand that's it i'm scrapping the car but within seconds i just said yep yeah, do the work because i realized how much i'd put into it already and I just wanted to see this thing with an MOT pass. And I think all of you guys, I deserve it too as well for dragging you along for, I don't know, six episodes in this series. We had to get an MOT on the Volvo, didn't we? So many, many weeks later and quite a lot of pestering them because I wasn't getting many updates, which is a bit annoying. We have the bill. And yeah, it's good news and bad news. I mean, as I said, when I was driving it, the car realistically drives kind of the same as when I dropped it off. But it has got a pass. And the main reason it's now got a pass is because of the rear brakes. So the parking brake wasn't working at all. Basically the handbrake, it's this weird foot pedal in these old Volvos. And so they had to renew both rear brace, brake discs, renew both the rear parking brake cables, renew the parking brake shoes, and renew the rear brake pads. So it's basically had new shoes, new brakes, and parking brake cables. Now the cost of all of that was £839. As well as that, I've been charged for an MOT test and a diagnostics fee. And it's come to a total 
of £1,223.11. But there's a reason that's a little bit less than what I was quoted, which is because he started trying to do the ABS rings and the drive shafts, he said, were seized. Which I think pretty much means they were so corroded on in there that he just couldn't get them out within reason. And I think that's probably why I had such an issue. If you remember back to my video, I was trying to hammer the drive shaft out through the hub. It just wasn't budging at all. And every video tutorial I watched, they sort of came out so easily. Essentially, he says they're seized on both sides. And it would mean using some sort of big pressure equipment to actually get them out. And he said by doing that, the chances of breaking other things is extremely likely. So he said to save me another thousand pounds of labor, he recommended that I just left the ABS rings. He cleared the light and it passed the MOT because the light stays off for quite a while. And yeah, that's why they haven't done the ABS things. So I'm quite glad about it, actually. I'm rather, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they told me that rather than doing it and then me having a bill now for two and a half thousand pounds. All in all though, I'm very happy because of this. We have a pass on our MOT certificate for my 800 pound Copart XC90. I'm very, very happy indeed. And like I say, even more happy that the work I did do before in this series has contributed to getting this thing through. I think ultimately, had I not done any of that, probably would have cost me near enough 3,000 pounds to get it through the MOT. So very, very happy indeed. Do you think I made the right decision by spending 1,200 pounds to get this thing through the MOT or would you have just scrapped it? And also, what should I do next? I have to say, honestly, I'm in two minds. It's getting dark because earlier on this morning, I filmed this video entirely. And then as I was driving the car more, I realized that everything I just said, I was kind of changing my mind about. When I filmed the video this morning, I was basically just talking about how it's got an MOT, but everything is still broken and it's time to move the car on. But then I was driving it and I just thought, I do really like it. I really like this car, but I still think maybe the right thing to do is to let someone else more mechanically able take this on from me as a project and enjoy it. And then it will free up space on my driveway to get something else. But I'd love to hear all of your comments. Also, I had a little bit of an idea because I've not done this for a while and I wonder if I should maybe spend 24 hours living in this thing. I'm always remarking at how huge it is. And I think you could probably almost get a double bed in here, couldn't you? So if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll spend 24 hours living in this Volvo XC90. But will we be able to drive this thing to Sweden? Well, in its current condition, I don't think so. I don't think it would be very safe to do that. And the question really is then, is it worth spending thousands and thousands of pounds to get it to a point where that would be an option? Because for thousands and thousands of pounds, I could just go buy another XC90. So anyway, there's a bunch of questions and a bunch of things I could ramble on about for hours and hours to come, but I will let you go. I'm very happy to bring you this video, this good news. Hope we're doing this car justice on the channel. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts on everything we've spoken about. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one very, very soon.